All right, so today <clears throat> we've got a just a, sl a slew of your typical uh, reefer madness pushing publications out there. That's where I first seen it, by the way. Uh, just pu just putting out this story that uh, these doctors in Colorado have apparently f discovered the first marijuana overdose death in the history of mankind. So uh, I pulled all these articles and I looked through them. Really couldn't find anything worth mentioning, to be honest. It was all just the same reactionary kind of writing with the same basic facts and statements from the doctors that wrote the report as well as at least one doctor, if not a couple from Michigan, doctors who have kind of went, went out and called, called this report straight up bullshit. So, <clears throat> you know, before we even get into what everybody else is saying or what was said so far, I'm sure the only reason you fucking clicked here is to see what I think about it. And I'm going to tell you right now. I learned a long time ago that correlation does not equal causation. And this can be demonstrated real easy, and you can make countless examples to, to illustrate this that exist in everyday life. <clears throat> but when it comes to reefer madness, when it comes to propaganda about how somehow cannabis is dangerous and somehow we need to you know be very cautious when we unroll or you know when we legalize marijuana because there's going to be so many you know so many problems that are going to happen we're going to see the basically the sky is going to fall and anytime that they put their information out there they can put correlative studies they can put correlative instant instances they can use correlation in so-called anecdotal situations to prove their points. But as soon as we do, as soon as we say, well, you know, most people that smoke weed and drive don't get in a wreck. So that must mean it's safer. Correlation doesn't mean causation is what they'll tell you. And they'll beat the fucking shit over your head until you can't stand it no more. But somehow, every time they got to make a point about the dangers of marijuana, correlation is causation. Back to the car, the driving while high thing. Okay, they just started to keep track of what substances are tested for and found in people's bodies that are in fatal car accidents. Fair enough. <clears throat> oh, look, the number of people that get in car fatal car accidents is it's their fault. Um, the number of them that tested positive for marijuana in their system has gone up. So legalizing marijuana has to have the effect of causing more people to go out and get stoned and crash their shit into shit and kill people. That's the kind of shit they do every fucking day. But you can't do that if you're on my side of the argument. You're not allowed. You don't get that privilege. They shut you the fuck down with the thing that your professor taught you in fucking, you know, your first year in science class. <clears throat> Causation and correlation. They look sexy together and they're, it's, they're fun to go out and party with. But correlation doesn't mean causation. Now, here we go again. We have yet another example of how they can do this. And you can look as far into this as you want, and you will not find anywhere where they're like, okay, here's how THC caused the fucking kid's heart to become inflamed, to, to swell up. There's nothing like that. There's no, there's no place in, in the world of scientific research that has ever shown cannabis or any of its compounds, or any of its individual components, when used individually in massive quantities, 
or used in concerto with each other in massive quantities. There's nowhere anywhere that shows that this can cause any kind of like uh, swelling of any organs. Well, anyway, so you might have, you know, you might have ran into this story or you might not have. Uh, just to get that out of the way, we'll go through a couple of these. <clears throat> We're going to start with this Fox News shit because whatever. This is just kind of lays it out real plain and simple for those of you who might not have seen the story yet. Doctors claim baby's 2015 death was caused by a marijuana overdose. Two poison control doctors who listed an 11-month-old boy's cause of death as damage to his heart muscle claimed that it uh, was brought on by ingesting marijuana. Doctors Thomas Nappy and Christopher Hort, Hoyt, uh, Hoyt, who published their report in the journal Clinical Practice and Cases in Emergency Medicine, <clears throat> said that the only thing they could find in the boy's system at the time of his 2015 death was marijuana. So, you, you know, you start right out with that correlation, causation. Oh, we found weed in, this, in a dead person. They must, that's what caused it, obviously. <laughs> See how that's already fucking wrong as hell? His official cause of death was listed as myocarditis. Um, <laughs> what is that exactly? It's a rare occurrence in children to even get this. Hoyt and Knapp, both of Rocky Mountain Poison and Drug Center, so that they ruled out all of their known causes of the condition, which include bacteria, uh, Kasakia virus, fungi, and parasites, the Reno Gazette Journal reported. Also on the list of known causes for um, myocarditis is unknown, because a lot of times they don't know what causes it. In fact, in most cases, they don't know what actually caused it. Um. So there's your causation argument, really deeply flawed over here. I mean, this is just the most egregious ever. Like, oh, we found marijuana in his system. Here's a condition that we've never seen marijuana to be, uh, you know, a cause of it. Now, there is a situation where these guys are going to say that there was previous cases where this was, um, this causation and correlation thing happened before. But in any of those cases that I've looked at, and I think they present three. Um, <laughs> funny thing is, is there's no fucking causation correlation uh, connection to those in those situations either. In fact, one of them was they said that the the marijuana caused this uh, condition, even though the the marijuana use was like eight months prior to this condition being treated, which by the way didn't kill the patient, and in none of the cases that they mentioned did it ever kill anybody so again the only thing we found was marijuana hoyt told the news outlet quote high concentrations of marijuana in his blood and the only thing we've uh, and that's the only thing we found i mean you keep saying that over and over like that's supposed to like the more you repeat your correlative um qualifier the more true it becomes that that was what happened what was the cause of the problem which is just total horseshit man Whenever people get like that, that's the first thing I think is, uh, why you keep repeating the same thing over again? The kid never really got better. And just one thing led to another, and the kid ended up with a heart stopped. And the kid stopped breathing and died. Is it just me, or is this guy really it doesn't sound like he really has his story straight? <laughs> this report was published in March and did not identify where the body's death occurred, nor reveal its, uh, his identity. Doctors concluded that the case was the first reported pediatric death associated with cannabis exposure. However, others in the field questioned their findings, including a 2016 paper that said marijuana could not be determined as the cause of uh, myocarditis. Quote, that statement is too much. Dr. Noah Kaufman, an emergency medicine specialist in northern Colorado, told Reno Gazette Journal, because that is staying confidential, uh, confidently that this is the first case, like we got one and I still disagree with that. And I mean, basically what he's alluding to there is like people were waiting on their edge of their seat to finally get a, a cannabis death, you know, and then, Oh, look, we got one. Ha ha. Like Jesus Christ, man. Are you people that sick? You really want to fucking make it. So someone died from cannabis, man. 
I know one way you can do it is just shove weed into someone down someone's throat until they choke to death. It's about the only way you can fucking do it. But the two contend that they explored every other potential avenue before drawing their conclusion. Well, why don't you go down the hall to somebody else that has to deal with the same condition and they couldn't find it either. And since they couldn't find weed in that kid, maybe you can tell them, hey, it was probably weed, even though you didn't find THC in that kid's system. If you died from this rare heart condition where your heart swells up until you just die, you know, it probably was the weed. And they also admit that they are, there are some causes of my, myocarditis that, are, that you can't even test for. So there's that. I mean, and there's the fact that you're talking about something that caused the heart condition, whatever it was, like it could have been a bacterial or a viral type thing. That thing could have been gone by the time the kid died. Like whatever caused the actual thing to start flaring up in the first place. That's a possibility. You know, and I'm, you know, there's so many fucking things to this case that there's the question mark is super big and the, Hey, it could have been weed is just a little tiny dot of insignificance that nobody, but these two doctors are getting behind nobody. I've been reading this shit since the story broke like early this morning. Actually, I, I first ran into people sharing this on Facebook, probably I don't know, about noon or so. And then I finally like found the article that kind of like got the ball rolling on it. And then I read like 10 more and I just no, and no, and none of this. Did I ever find anybody that agreed with these guys? The child didn't leave the house between going, being normal and being sick. Hoyt told the Reno Gazette journal, the child had THC in the blood and in the urine and there were marijuana products in the house. I feel comfortable with the workup that we did and how much we ruled out in this particular case. That's just, uh, how many times are you going to say this shit? Was there THC in his system? Um, and then of course this always, always comes up with these follow-ups. Even if I'm not convinced that it could kill your kid, you need to be really careful because it could make them really sick. It needs to be locked up away in the medicine chest because it can cause seizures. Um, that's another one. All right. Cannabis doesn't cause inflammation. It doesn't cause hearts to blow up like with inflammation. And it also doesn't cause fucking seizures. All right. There's no, that's not even reefer madness that I've ever heard. Where'd you get this shit from? That you're, you're way off there, dude. It can cause real big problems in kids that can lead to other problems. This guy just sounds like a fucking reefer madness spewing pro prohibitionist. Pure and simple. Like he was probably so pissed off that there was THC founding in this kid's system that he wanted to make a big ass throw a tizzy about it. Let's see. I think this is him right here. Let's listen to it. the house between being normal and being sick. The child had... THC in their blood and in the urine. A medical case. Yeah, we got that. Is getting attention. This is terrible uh, video. And around the world today, as internet. Nine News first reported last night, two poison control specialists from Denver reported what they claim is the first ever death from a person consuming too much marijuana. The patient was an 11 month old who they think accidentally got into edibles or some kind of concentrated marijuana product. We also heard from other doctors who think the claim, which was published in Medical Journal earlier this year, simply goes too far. Nine News reporter Brandon Ritterman broke the story for us, and we want to give some context to parents trying to understand this about what the doctors say and what, if anything, we can actually do about it. Yeah, absolutely, Kim, and the advice for parents really hasn't changed. It's lock your stuff up if you keep any kind of marijuana in the house because marijuana just isn't good for kids. Um, how about telling parents to lock up their fucking pills? We got about 60,000 kids going to the emergency room every year because of pharmaceutical drugs that kids find and eat. <clears throat> Somewhere in my reading today, I also read where thousands of kids die every year 
from eating all kinds of household bullshit that you don't lock away from your kids. So, you know, I think, I think parents that have kids and do marijuana products, I think they're more concerned about not getting their shit ripped off, you know, than some kid dying because they fucking ate too many of their fucking gummy bears. Because guess what, man? Everybody, except for you, apparently you fucking reefer madness idiot trolls knows that you can't fucking die from a marijuana overdose. There's just no way. There's no, there's no possible way. There's no way it could trigger this thing that they're talking about. And we're going to get to that. Still, even if these <clears throat> doctors are right, we need to point out the problem this baby had is not something that <clears throat> we see <clears throat> every time a kid does get into marijuana. This child died of myocarditis. That is simply inflammation of the whole heart muscle, which causes the heart to push into the sac around it. And in this case, it ended up failing. Now we have thousands of known cases of kids ingesting marijuana products and not having this problem. Because it, it doesn't, because there's no fucking cause and effect relationship to the marijuana in this, this uh, condition. A marijuana death. We don't know if it's something that only a small percentage of kids might be at It's risk a zero percent. We don't know the mechanism, the reason that marijuana might lead to myocarditis. Exactly. Also, that's the whole that's the whole problem there, buddy. If there is no mechanism known to whereas THC or anything in the marijuana could cause this fucking heart, you know, to swell up, then you don't have nothing there. You don't you can't just say that just because this the marrow, the cannabis was found, THC was found in the kid's system. There's no, that doesn't work, man. And this is the article I was talking about. This is the one that set the whole thing in motion. <clears throat> um, it's 50% just anti-marijuana, like, advice for parents. Um. This is just some basic things about other things that could happen with this myocarditis. A lot of times the cause of myocarditis is uh, unknown, are unknown. <laughs> um, Hoyt may be pretty confident, but I'm not. I think it's more likely that there's not a relationship, says Dr. Kaufman again. Quote, there's so many things that caused the problem that this poor kid had, poor baby had, by the way. And excuse me, if you, if this doesn't sound like when these guys are talking about this shit from time to time, not this guy here, Noah Kaufman, but this guy here and his partner that wrote this fucking report, whenever they talk about this, this 11 month old kid, they keep acting like this kid was like some kind of party animal. <laughs> like, oh yeah, you, you know, you had to consume this and do that. It's like, no, if anything, somebody fucking gave the kid the, t the THC laced, whatever it was, unless they're. I don't get it. Like you're going to hear stuff about like the parents were living in hotel hopping kind of style lifestyle. And there was other drugs found in the, um, in the, uh, uh, environment that the kid was in. And Oh, what do we got here? The toxicology report, um, revealed urine enzyme linked immunosorbent assay positive for tetrahydrocannabinol cannabinol my uh carbolic acid thc cooh and undetectable serum acetaminophen oh what and psilocylate concentrations so on top of the cannabis apparently the parents of this kid also exposed the kid to acetaminophen and the aspirin or maybe that's the, I don't get it. Like maybe they were giving him that at the uh, hospital when the kid was there. So apparently the kid was in the hospital for a few and the doctors were like, okay, while he was there, <clears throat> he got worse. And then, you know, whatever. Well, here's the 11 month old male with no known past medical history presented to an ED with a central nervous system depression and went into cardiac arrest. Uh, the patient was lethargic for two hours after awakening that morning and then had a seizure. During the prior 24 to 48 hours, he was irritable and decreased activity and was later retching. 
He was noted to be healthy before developing these symptoms. Upon arrive, arrival in emergency department, he was unresponsive with no gag reflex, vital signs, temperature, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> um, yeah. So this is the report right here. Pediatric death due to myocarditis after exposure to cannabis. I mean, that statement on its own is okay because you're just, just just stating some facts. Like he died due to this and it was after the cannabis was exposed. You know, you, you didn't say the causation there. And in this whole report, he never really does. He just says, well, you know, we found the THC and then look, this, he's got this. In previous situations, let's see where are those. I think they're mentioned in here. The link between cannabis uh, use and myocarditis has been documented in multiple teenagers and young adults. Multiple could be any time you hit three or more, all right? So you might as well have just said three because that's all you talk about here, I think. Uh, in 2008, there was a 16-year-old with severe heart failure requiring a left ventricle assist device associated with biopsy diagnosed myo myocarditis. The author attributed the heart failure to cannabis use of unknown chronicity. Um, and you really can't get nothing else out of it, but I can call that bullshit because, again, correlation and causation, can't, they can't be that married. 2014, Rodriguez Castro reported a 29-year-old male who had two episodes of myopericarditis several months apart. Each episode occurred within two days of smoking cannabis. So I'm sure if this guy was actually a smoker of cannabis that smoked pretty much more than the two times. So it's funny, you can say that, oh, these episodes, they happen within two days of smoking the weed. That's a questionnaire. It's a box that you check off. Like, you, you smoke weed? Check. <laughs> it doesn't, it's, it's the ultimate way to get your correlation does make causation in a study because that's 90% of these studies that want to demonize shit. They have it pre-set up to, in all these questionnaires that they use in all these health clinics and all these places where they catch people that are high risk for drug addiction and shit like that. In 2016, uh, Tornabize reported a 15-year-old male diagnosed with my myocarditis clinically in cardiac magnetic resonance imaging after initiating regular cannabis use eight months earlier. So there's, I guess they're saying after eight months of using weed, then it just, that's what happened. There were no other causes for myocarditis, including infections uncovered by these authors. And you know what, man? Neither was the cannabis. No adulterants were identified in these patients consume marijuana. How do you know that? Did you fucking test the marijuana every time? Maybe they were buying some shitty ass marijuana that was full of mold. We heard that like fungus can cause this shit. So this causation is just loose as fuck on every single case in this report, including the case at hand where it's just totally like, uh, it's totally implied, but they're going to hammer it home nine times out of 10. Every time they mention it, they're going to hammer it home. <clears throat> So, um, here's just an example of how they do it. Autopsy findings in this patient were consistent with non-infectious my, uh, myocarditis as a cause of death. Okay. The histological findings of myocyte ne necrosis with mature lymphocytic mixed with cellular infiltrate are consistent with drug-induced toxic myocarditis. Now, drug-induced toxic myocarditis is when you take a drug that instantly makes your heart bloat up and fucking just stop. Not in a few days you develop this thing and your heart fucking stops. The presence of THC metabolites in the patient's urine serum, most likely secondary to ingestion, 
is only uncovered the only uncovered risk factor in the etiology for his myocarditis. This is highly unlikely the uh, attributed to passive exposure. So that's saying there's a good chance that this wasn't attributed to secondhand smoke. This was attributed to somebody who consumed the cannabis themselves. It is difficult to extrapolate a specific time of cannabis ingestion given the unknown dose of THC, the individual variability of metabolism and excretion, as well as the lack of data on this tub topic in the pediatric population and post-mortem redistribution kinetics. <sighs> Whatever, man. You're trying to tell me that this little kid might have had some kind of metabolism uh, variability with cannabis? He's 11 months old, man. How much? How long do you think he's been smoking that? them dabs, guys? So this report, in my opinion, is just complete horseshit. Those doctors are complete fucking just dipshits reckless and you wanted to know my opinion man you know i wasn't gonna go light on this shit because this is the first time in the history of of humanity that a, that a somebody and now we have two doctors so far that are saying oh yes that's what's going on here um it's the first time in the history of mankind that somebody has claimed that this plant that has so many medicinal benefits it can kill you. You can you can smoke some of it, and it'll give you. It'll blow your heart up, and you'll die. That's what they're pretty much saying. Um, let me see. I think I wanted to see this video too. The case in question happened in 2015, the second year of recreational marijuana sales in Colorado. An 11-month-old boy came into the ER after a seizure, barely conscious. This image shows the doctors had to insert a breathing tube into the baby, but his heart began to fail. The kid never. How do you, how do we know that your breathing tube wasn't contaminated with some kind of fucking thing that causes heart to get the inflammation, like some kind of a bacteria or something like that? Or was the heart blowing up already? Is that why the really got better? And just one thing led to another, and the kid ended up, the heart stopped, and the kid stopped breathing and died. See, that, I, that, just like when I read that, he sounds like he's kind of like, he don't have his story straight, or he's nervous. Dr. Christopher Hoyt was on duty at the Regional Poison Control Center in Denver that day and was called to help. He and another doctor at the center set out to explain why this baby died after they saw the boy's blood and urine tested positive for marijuana. And we just wanted to make sure that... Uh, that sounded like, oh, shit, we found marijuana in there, and we're like, what? We're not going to call this a marijuana-related, you know, fatality if there was something else, you know, mm -hmm. that we could... Oh, really? So they're like, oh, we found marijuana. The kid's dead. That's got to be what it is. Let's look and see if there was anything else, just in case. Point at, and we looked and looked and couldn't find it. Which led the doctors to make what in scientific speak amounts to a very bold claim. As of this writing, this is the first reported pediatric death associated with cannabis exposure. I I'm going to have to call BS on this Thank one. Thank you. Dr. Noah Kaufman is an ER specialist who reviewed the report published in a medical journal earlier this year to give us a second opinion. That statement is too much. That is too much as far as I'm concerned because that is saying confidently that this is the first case, we've got one. And I still disagree with that. To understand the controversy, you need to know exactly how this boy died. The That's what I keep saying. I mean, uh, we, we know how he died, the heart thing. But we got to know exactly how THC is supposed to do that. Where's the, the mechanism? Like, you, you know, like when you put, uh, you know, a flame to some gasoline, poof, it goes up and, you know, that's a mechanism. You start the fire, you light it. We don't have a mechanism. THC doesn't, like, if you throw it at a heart, it doesn't make it blow up and... Condition that killed him is not in dispute. The autopsy found he had myocarditis, that's inflammation, of his whole heart muscle. It pushed into the sack around the heart. And then there's fluid that builds up 
on the inside of that sac, and it, sometimes it doesn't allow the heart to, to, to fully expand and beat like it's supposed to normally. Doctors know that myocarditis can be caused by drugs, but more commonly, it's caused by an infection. You sound very convinced that, that marijuana killed this child. Uh, I never say 100% on anything um, because you you know you can get fooled by things but we extensively ruled out almost every other cause that we can think of that's not how you do fucking science you don't do science by process of elimination all right process of elimination is how you get like a few things you know like in life but you don't get a solid scientific conclusion by saying oh well you know we ruled out all the, the and by the way, when you say you ruled out a bunch of other things, you're being a dishonest uh, fucker because you didn't rule out the biggest cause of mitocarditis, which is unknown. <laughs> you didn't rule that one out. You could have just left it at that. But like I said, now you're going to have to go to all those other places where people have died from this and be like, you know what? It was the weed. He may be pretty confident. But I'm not. I, I, I think that it's more likely that there's not a relationship. We thought it was more likely that it was something else, but we tested a lot of things, even things that are very rare uh, to find in kids, and we found none of those things on this kid. Like, I'm, I hope you tested for opioids, because also, and what's up with the acetaminophen and the aspirin? And is it safe to have both of those things at the same time in an 11-month-old kid? I'm, you know, literally I've been on message boards too, looking at comments. Nobody's picked up on the fact that this kid had acetaminophen and aspirin in his fucking system. Doesn't that matter? Isn't that something? I mean, you're, you're talking about the test for the THC was 7.6 fucking nanograms. That is not very much THC, man. The only thing that we found was a high concentration of uh, THC. High concentration, my ass. It was 7.6 nanograms. And this kid's urine and ended up in this kid's blood also. And that's the issue. There's no smoking gun. The doctors who made this claim could only rule out other causes. They also admit it's not unusual for the cause of a myocarditis case to go completely unexplained. And most Bullshit. kids who accidentally eat marijuana don't end up with serious medical problems like this. We're not getting... Can we just say that most complications caused by marijuana in the history that we know about marijuana, we've never seen anything like this. Isn't that, doesn't that matter? That cannabis and THC and the things that are naturally within them and without adding anything to it have never caused this kind of fucking reaction. Those every single day. There are very few and far between. There's been thousands of ingestions and there's generally not, not a big problem. One thing all the doctors we talk to do agree on, if you keep marijuana products in the house, keep them out of the reach. No shit, dude. So, let me see. I don't see much else there. A lot of these are just the same regurgitated one over and over. Um, yeah, so acetaminophen poisoning, it happens a lot. Um, it would take a whole fuck of a lot to cause you to die just from having too much acetaminophen in your body. However, um, if you have been doing heavy amounts of acetaminophen for day after day after day, um, you can get things that go on like hepatotoxicity, um, multiple organ failures, which can be fatal. And then you got this, uh, too much aspirin sh can cause all these things, including tissue swelling, inflammation of the large intestine and abdominal pain and discomfort. The mechanism by which aspirin and other pain relievers containing silates affect asthma is not clear, but it can have devastating consequences. In severe cases, a single dose of aspirin can cause a person to lose consciousness and stop breathing. I also looked into, uh, <clears throat> marijuana and seizures like that one like one of those doctors was trying to talk about 
and there really was nothing there it was like completely like a dead end search it was like a wild goose chase there was there's never been too many situations where someone was like oh yeah the seizure completely from the marijuana and every time you see well yeah there's marijuana involved and this person had a seizure almost every time that situation was because they had something else in their system <clears throat> and again some of these situations are like the, the marijuana was in their system, sure, but they might not have ingested marijuana that day or even that week. <sighs> Which is the most redundant thing I have to keep saying over and over and over is a positive test for marijuana doesn't mean jack shit. THC is supposed to be in your system. You have a fucking thing inside your body called the endocannabinoid system. That is half of your immune system right there. And if you don't have that thing functioning properly and firing on all cylinders, you get sick. And if you're already sick and that thing ain't working right, you get sicker. You never get better. That's what's wrong with half of this fucking country. According to the New York Daily News, a child was taken to the hospital. Uh, study authors Hoyt and Knapp were part of the team of doctors. There was a breathing cube. The child died after he, uh, his heart stopped. All right, we know all that. There's little information on what Knipe and Ho Hoyt uh, have called the first pediatric marijuana overdose death in history. The child's name and the name of the hospital where he died were not released. It was Also, it wasn't mentioned how the infant may have ingested the pot that purportedly killed him. It isn't sure either whether the case resulted in criminal investigation or not. Exactly. Kate USA pointed out the death took place in 2015 and was previously covered in a 2016 study where the lead author was not able to single out marijuana as the cause of the child's myocarditis. But I think that was also the same report that basically said, but we really can't, we can't say that it did. We can't say that we can't go on to say, yeah, marijuana is why this kid died. There's just simply no way. And definitely not an overdose or whatever. Like what this guy is basically saying is, oh, you know, the THC caused some kind of a heart inflammation flare up to begin. It isn't like, you know, he he took so much weed that his heart just went boom. Existing government literature contains no references to marijuana overdose potentially causing death like other drug overdoses could. The Drug Enforcement Administration's pop fact sheet stresses that there has yet to be a marijuana overdose death to be reported. And while drug abuse education portal project no.com acknowledges that overdosing on pot can happen albeit rarely the site did not make any mention of the substance directly causing death instead noting that hallucinations and other symptoms such as overdoses could increase the risk of dangerous and potentially fatal accidents sure it could sure it could okay now <sighs> Some of the most disingenuous things going on in the world today is from doctors. I mean, we act like these guys are just like, can do no wrong or whatever. <laughs> um, the cannabis came with it. Actually, they just uh, carbon copied the Denver Post article entitled, Denver doctors say 11-month-old boy's deadly heart condition was likely related to marijuana. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then my takeaway on this article was, for instance, the doctors noted that the boy had been living in a motel and that a parent had admitting to drug possession, including cannabis. It'd be nice if we can get a little more of the backstory, all right? So your, your story starts to fall apart when we don't get any further reports of where this happened. And I know that people want to protect people's privacy and all, but can you at least point to where something happened? And if these parents, this, this is really reality, guys. If these parents were really, what you're saying is these parents were like, oh my God, my kid's going to, is, is really unresponsive and he looks like he's dying. They take him to the emergency room. Bye-bye. See you later. Have fun, you know, with this dying kid. We're going to go about our business and do whatever we do. Go to another hotel are you fucking kidding me right now? If this is a real story, and I hate to be a conspiracy theory, like, like out there crazy person or whatever, 
But the, the, if you want to be sincere about a story like this, you, you got to be like, okay, and then the parents got charged with neglect because you don't turn a kid into an emergency room that tests positive for THC, even in Colorado where it's legal to smoke weed. You don't do that without a fucking police report. You don't do that with the kid died and no one was arrested. No, I'm afraid that this story doesn't really hold a whole lot of fucking muster unless you give us the fucking rest of the story. And if they did get arrested and charged with child endangerment or whatnot, then that's public knowledge. There should be no reason to hide that from us. Oh, we want to protect the identity of the kid. The kid's dead. What's there to protect there? So I'm starting to wonder if this whole story ain't just completely contrived. But if it ain't, in the interest of uh, you know not disrespecting the dead, I still want to know what the fuck's going on with the parents. The doctors noted no report of the boy actively ingesting cannabis. Like the parents weren't like, oh yeah, you know, we were sitting around passing dab pipes around with the kid and we all had a handful of gummy bears at least. No, they, I mean, they're not going to admit that that was happening. But at the same time, if they knew that the kid accidentally ingested some of their cannabis, it wouldn't have been that big of a deal in Colorado at the time that this happened for them to say that because at the time that this happened, a lot of people were taking their kids into the emergency room. That's before the public got more education about the fact that cannabis is not toxic. So people were taking kids to the hospital all the time. There was like a 25, 30% increase that year of uh, hospital and CDC calls and people taking people to the emergency room in a lot of those cases were kids because they ate their fucking weed cookies or whatever. They wrote that it was unlikely, given the level of THC in the boy's system, that he had merely been exposed to marijuana in passing. The doctors cannot say how much marijuana the boy likely ingested. They also cannot pinpoint when the ingestion occurred, giving only probable time frame of two to six days prior to his death. Lastly, they added that the that inconsistent blood test results meant there was a slight chance that the myocarditis may have been developing silently prior to the marijuana ingestion. Um, yeah, and of course that made it just go crazy. Uh, somewhere in these comments, somebody made a really good point. <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of things that people, we get told, oh, don't leave your weed around where the kids can get to it. Why? You afraid they might like take the weed and then all of a sudden they know like all the stuff you're trying to cram down their throats is bullshit. Cause you know, it's, it's really crazy that this has gotten to this. You know what I mean? Um, somebody had some statistics in here that was really interesting to, to state. Whoa. <laughs> so what about that though? We got all these other things where you're talking about kids and it's like marijuana has never killed anybody ever. And they keep coming at us with this bullshit about protect the kids the kids are kids are in danger <sighs> man it's when you need george carlin <laughs> all right i can't find that um this is basically all i had on that uh <clears throat> and you're gonna get some fallout from this story throughout the weekend um, maybe next week, <clears throat> some big uh, high profile doctor, like a Dr. Oz or a Sanjay Gupta, hopefully, <clears throat> hey guys, will chime in on this because everybody in the scientific community, whether you're a doctor or just a run of the mill everyday scientist, <clears throat> when you look at this horse shit where this guy 
got on TV and was like, yeah, man, we, we ruled out all these other things, so it had to be the weed that was in the system. That's just... If I was Dr. Oz, if he's even a doctor, or Dr. Gupta, I would get on this. I would be advocate for cannabis, like you said you were whenever you said that shit. So Michigan doctors respond to claims of marijuana overdose. Um... Uh, uh, it may ca- it can cause anxiety. It can cause dysphoria or depression. It can cause insomnia. Psychiatrist Dr. Car- Carmen McIntyre said, "Quote: Some of the things that people are looking for in marijuana are actually problematic for the sorts of disorders that I treat, and certainly the side effects can be problematic." All right, now that's your opinion as a psychiatrist. Apparently, you need to study cannabis more, but I respect what little bit of studying you've done or how you've gotten there. I don't know, which is why the Detroit area psychiatrist, Dr. McIntyre doesn't typically recommend medical marijuana to her patients. Well, you know, I've had patients that quit Xanax after they did medical marijuana and that's pretty powerful shit. So, um, quote, I'm not saying I would never ever see a scenario for it, but I've certainly, not through the literature, been proven to be more effective uh, than anything else we have available. Oh, please. But every individual body and brain is unique. So I don't really agree with this doctor very much, but then I guess I'll have to agree here. But she believes calling the 11-month-old's death a marijuana overdose premature. Quote, it's interesting. It's something to think about, but I don't think that they've proven causality They have simply demonstrated a correlation. See, she gets that part of it anyway. Dr. Richard Piazza with the Society for Healing Arts Institute is skeptical. Quote, as far as I know, there is no LD50, which is a lethal dose of marijuana, ever been recorded in medical history. And the LD50 is pretty much like the size of a house. You'd have to consume that much cannabis in a really short period of time to die. According to, like, estimates, okay. He thinks the child had a pre-existing heart condition. And I think that's pretty much what everybody that looks at this case will tell you. That obviously this heart condition was already there. And whatever environment the kid was living in wasn't helping matters. But the, the cannabis probably had nothing to do with the, the heart condition the the infl- inflammation and ultimately the heart stopping had not none of that was caused by cannabis not any of it not even the original infection or whatever hell when they poke that fucking breathing tube in there probably caused more damage than the cannabis quote there is one possibility which is probably not going to make it to the final diagnosis on the death certificate I'm sure it's probably going to be a congenial cardiomyopathy, which either led to SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome, or some other condition which lead to cardiopulmonary pulmonary event with marijuana in the system. Um, The marijuana in the system should not even be mentioned in this death. You should be like, oh, that's kind of weird that this 11-month-old infant had marijuana in its system. And for that, maybe the parents should get looked at for whatever else they might have been doing that was crazy as fuck. But come on, man. You're making a giant leap, doctors, to say that the marijuana caused this heart problem or this heart to blow up and die. And it's not. Piazza don't believe it's possible to overdose with cannabis. Quote, there is no way that a, that the good Lord would put cannabinoid receptors in the human body to be stimulated by marijuana. He wouldn't have invented that if there was a way it would hurt you. Piazza said, well, Piazza, if you took the good Lord part of that out of there, that would be cool because we don't need that part in there. He's, he, he wouldn't have invented that You think God invented fucking the endocannabinoid system, bro? All right. See, I 
there's some things that I agree with and there's some things I don't agree with with both of these doctors. And I'm just going to say that if you change the good Lord with nature, um, nature wouldn't have invented that if it would hurt you. Exactly. <clears throat> this guy has dedicated his career to medical marijuana. Quote, I pray that the first person never is found that marijuana hurts because I left traditional medicine to do this because I believe it to be true. I believe we can cure cancer. I believe we can make seizures go away. I believe we can make Alzheimer's go away. Piazza said. Huh. Well, you know, it would be nice if we had more to the story, but we really don't. I mean, I would be able to go sit here and, and babble on and on and on for another hour about it, but there's just nothing to this story. There's absolutely nothing. There's there's a couple of doctors who've seen a kid come into the emergency room with THC in his system. Then the kid died, and they were like, oh, well, it had to be the weed. And they wrote this horse shit report and then called up their buddy at Nine News to, you know, get their, like, propaganda piece out there. And then every reefer madness publisher in town came by and picked it up. And you know what tipped me off on that one was uh, the Daily Mail was the first one. And then News Hub came later. And then the new one, uh, I don't see it here, but Newsweek. <laughs> when I see Newsweek run it, I'm like, oh, shit, here we go. <laughs> the new reefer madness, the new face of reefer, reefer madness. Besides Vice News, by the way, they're also heavily into reefer madness. So that's all I got on this shit, um, to be honest. I, there might be a reason to do another re update on this because, like I said, I'm pretty sure some heavy-hitting fucking badass, big-name, you know, TV doctor or something, somebody's going to come out on a TED talk or something and just destroy the fuck out of this stupid shit and basically end the careers of those two doctors, the, you know, Dr. Nape and Dr. Hoyt, because, and I want to say that there's something more to this. The, uh, there's the, the coroner that I think if it's true, this will be the third case in which this coroner in Colorado has tried to connect cannabis and a dead body or two. And the only one, I'm sorry, my, my memory don't serve me right now, but one of them was the drug interaction cannabis deaths that they were getting piling up over there last year. The report came out and uh, Chelsea Clinton ran with it. But... So, you know, and to summarize my um, opinion about this is that you can't, you, you just simply can, you're not allowed, we're not allowed to, to allow correlation to become causation in our arguing. You don't let us do it. You don't say anecdotal evidence is enough. Like, oh, okay, we got a kid here that's having a seizure. We give them the CBD oil, boom, seizures are gone. Oh, no, no, that's not scientific proof. We don't get that. We have to go through FDA trials with fake, you know, CBD made in a lab over in fucking Israel before we get an FDA approval on something that's completely fucking harmless and works. But somehow, some way, these guys here, Dr. Hoyt and Dr. Nape, or Nappy or whatever the fuck his name is, these guys can pull causation out of their ass like it ain't shit and be like, you know what? We checked all the other things and they didn't, there was none of those that caused this thing, so it had to be the weed. Had to be the weed. Um, That's what I got. If you uh, like this shit, hit the like button, man. And if you want to subscribe or if you if you want to get more of these videos, hit the subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, I'm going to say it again. Check and make sure you're still subscribed because I'm losing subscribers every time I upload a video that fucking happens. I don't know what the hell is going on, but YouTube hates me. Um, 
obviously I tell the truth and you know whatever this video is people can call me a conspiracy theory if you a theorist if you want or you can say I'm nutty for not believing these doctors or whatever I don't care what the the temperature of the room is or what everybody else is talking about I feel like if these guys are allowed to make correlation rise to the level of causation when it comes to some somebody dying from something I can say whatever the fuck I want to. <laughs> Freedom of speech.